Welcome everyone, Tegvin here from Beyond Systems. Today with another exercise in this month's daily exercise series. And this time we are focusing on something more static, but it still, it will challenge the way you coordinate your muscles in order to keep a good posture. And that's what this exercise is mainly about. For those of you who do not know yet, this month we are doing a one exercise per day series. And you can jump in at any point if you want to review some of the videos that we've done so far. Just jump on my channel and check out the series there. Also, subscribe and like and hit the notification bell on this video if you want to stay up to date with more of such exercises. So every single day I share one exercise with a little bit of explanation to it that has to do with either mobility or flexibility or strength or coordination. Just something that challenges you in terms of your overall mobility and capacity to interact with your physical body, also your perception and how movement can actually impact you in a positive way throughout your life. All right, let's get started with today's exercise. It's a standing exercise, a standing Qigong exercise actually. So we start with our legs totally closed. We open at an angle of 45 degrees, turning on the heel and we turn the feet back towards the front so that the inside edges are parallel towards each other. Now bear with me. There are a couple of tiny nuggets that I have to share with you before we go into the full exercise. Drop your hip down. Very important when we do so, you actually want your tailbone and your pubic bone to stay at level. So we start this from a pretty neutral spinal position in a standing pose. And when you slightly bend your hips and your knees, just let yourself drop down. There will be a point where your muscles will automatically catch you. And it's probably like five to 10 centimeters lower, so around five inch lower to where you started out. When you do this, pay attention that you do not fall into this hollow back position, but that your pelvic ring, if you imagine the top part of your pelvic ring to be closed with a wooden board, imagine you just want to shift that port a little bit slower, but it still stays parallel to the ground. It doesn't tilt forward or backward. Or if the pelvic ring was a bowl of water, you would just want to put it a little bit lower without pouring the water out towards the front or towards the rear. So that's the very important thing here because this is what actually moves your hip joints, knees and ankles. From this position, we then gonna still make sure that our shoulders are loose, that the cervical spine is relaxed and long as well. And First thing of action is we simply gonna shift the weight totally on the right leg and back to center and totally onto the left leg and back to center and over to the right and back to center and over to the left and back to center. What's important is that when we shift the weight, look at my knee. My knee shifts out towards the side with me. If I keep my knee exactly on top of my foot when I shift the weight, see that I twist my leg in the knee in order to make the weight shift and my hip also slightly moves off towards the side. This is, ex is exactly what I try to avoid because that puts additional pressure on the menisci in the knee and that's what I don't want. So make sure to flex your ankle to allow for the leg to go out towards the side. And then you can try and turn the left leg out on the heel, turn it back in, shift to the other side towards the left, turn the right foot out and come back in. 
shift the weight to the right, turn the left out. Now when we do this, still make sure that your knee points in the same direction than the toes of the same leg, rather than the knee pointing towards the inside, whereas the toes pointing out this way. That's very important in terms of a healthy posture and structure here. If you have troubles with this opening of the hip joint under pressure, under weight, no problem there, just make this turnout a slight little bit smaller. So when we stand in this shoulder width position, you shift the weight to the right and just turn your hip connected with your left leg out just as much as is possible without the right knee dropping to the inside. That's very important. If that's only 5 or 10 degrees, then that's it. Eventually you will relax the hip joint and you will be able to open more towards the side, but that might be something that your hip and the muscles around it still need to get used to. Same thing on the other side. So shift the weight towards the left, make sure that the knee doesn't drop to the inside and open the hip out towards the side. Left and turn the right leg out. Make sure that the rest of the body stays upright. From time to time you can check if you is my knee still out rather than in like this. And then if you get a little bit more accustomed with that, you can even sink a slight little bit lower when you go to the side. So from my neutral position in the middle, I shift my weight to the right. And when I turn the hip, see now I sunk down even a little bit further. Come back to center. Shift the weight to the left. And just sink down a tiny little bit deeper. Come back to center, stand up. All right, so this is just a pre-exercise and if you don't have a lot of time, just doing this alone can give you a lot of perception training and also coordinative training for the muscles surrounding your hip joint and a better grounding a better sensation for the foot that you're standing on and for the three main joints in the legs as well as because whenever we do this see we want the lumbar spine to stay long as well as this perception about the lumbar spine with the tailbone being dropped not actively tucked just dropped with a an elongated lumbar spine that's what we are looking for here. All right, let's repeat this one more time. From here, shift the weight to the right, drop, turn the left foot out a little bit, make sure that the knee stays out, lumbar spine stays long, shoulders are totally relaxed, come back to center, turn to the left, Turn the right leg out, make sure that the left knee stays out, lumbar spine is long, shoulders relaxed, come back to center. What we're going to do now is add arms. Drop to the right, left leg goes out. Change the left leg position so that only the ball of the foot touches the ground and the heel is actually off the ground and that 100% of your weight is now in the right leg. So you can pick up the left leg at any time. See, without any change in your upper body and without any additional change in your leg. So neither should your lower leg go in when you try to lift the left leg, nor should your upper body have to go back as a counterbalance in order to lift the left leg. So what you want is really to be able to stand on the right leg that is in perfect structure for the knee and for the ankle, still have an upright body and be able to pick up the left leg without additional counterbalancing action in the body. In here, I'm gonna lift the arms like so. Basically, both arms 
are then almost in body center. One arm is a little bit further in front, the other one is a little bit closer. In Qigong it's called the holding the baby posture. So imagine as if you were holding a baby here that's lying in your arms and you look exactly into its face or his or her face like this. When we turn this back into center, some of you know this pose already, it would be this hugging a tree pose or free circle standing Qigong pose. There are many different names for that. So basically the elbows are dropped. They are lower than the shoulders. The shoulders are relaxed. The palms face towards me and slightly up and the fingers are long but in a relaxed way. They are not straightened out hard. They're just relaxed and long. And when I turn to the side from here, it's just the left arm is a little bit higher than the right and both hands are almost in one line where I would hold this imaginary baby. So basically I stay in this pose making sure that the lumbar spine is relaxed and long, making sure that my shoulders are dropped, making sure that my weight is 100% on the right leg, the left leg is empty, just barely touches the ground, and keep breathing there. Whenever, I'm gonna sh cut this short now, whenever you feel there is too much strain in your quads on the right leg, turn the left heel down, shift your weight into the center all the way over towards the left side turn the right foot out so that the right ball of the foot barely touches the ground the arms are in reverse so the right arm is now a little bit higher than the left I have, I have this holding the baby posture out towards the right side again I could lift the right leg off the ground at any time and just stand here make sure that the knees out hip is relaxed your lumbar spine is long your shoulders and arms are long and relaxed and whenever there is too much strain in the left leg you come back to center and either switch back to the first side or close the exercise ideally you're looking for being able to stand on either side for at least five minutes, maybe even longer. If your leg starts to shake, that's absolutely fine. So if you are in this pose and you feel the muscles of your leg starting to twitch, very important, do not try to compensate by tensing them up even more allow the twitching that's absolutely fine on the contrary that's exactly what you want because after a certain time the twitching stops the muscle relaxes and then you actually trained your muscle to be able to or you trained your body to switch to a different type of muscle fiber which is normally only accessed subconsciously uh, that will then allow you to stay in poses that put strains on your legs like this for prolonged periods of time. Also always make sure to breathe freely to have those relaxed shoulders, this long lumbar spine, like I said, can switch from one side, center, other side, but don't just go left and right, really go in one pose, stay there, constantly check, can I still lift the leg, stay there maybe for a minute, for two minutes at the beginning, and then build that slowly up to maybe five minutes on one side, and then do the other side, just stay there relaxed. Let me show you how this pose looks from the side, see I'm in this spine is long position, I could pick up the left leg at any time, left arm is up here, right arm is down here and that's where I stand. 
it's really important. This is a meditative pose. This is a pose that allows you to calm the mind because there is so much going on down here in your legs. And the more you manage to simply be in this sensation rather than mentalizing about it and, and, and having your thoughts run wild, the easier it will get. It's an incredible centering, calming and relaxing exercise, although it seems to be a lot of strain on the muscles, especially when you start out. A point where you should definitely switch sides is when you feel your muscle tensing up so much that when you check, your knee is suddenly pulled to the inside or be careful not to catch yourself to stand up and lock your knee out. You want to stay in a bent knee position. And like I said, whenever you feel that the muscle tenses up so much that the knee is pulled to the inside, then switch sides, give this leg maybe even a slight shake and start the next side anew with good posture and then switch back one more time and just give this leg again the idea of the perfect alignment because staying in a twisted knee position static like this puts a lot of strain on passive structures which is definitely not a good idea and should be avoided all right have a beautiful time thank you for watching and see you around in the next video sorry for this being a little bit a longer one but um, i think it's important in this specific case. Have a beautiful time. See you around. Bye.